I have quite an affinity for these older Sony Handycams, such as this Hi8 XR Handycam, this regular Hi8 model, a Digital 8 model over here I used for many, many of my videos. Now, of course, using these vintage camcorders, the process to get the footage into your computer is a little different, not quite as easy as something like a more modern flash memory based camcorder that records to SD memory cards and the like where you just take the memory card out and pop it into your computer and access the footage that way instead for all intents and purposes since I really don't have a big collection of mini DV camcorders the majority of the videotapes that I record these days are 8 millimeter uh, video 8, high 8, and digital 8, and these are the tapes. So how do we get this onto the computer? There's plenty of videos on YouTube detailing the correct procedures to transfer videotapes to the computer with the highest quality possible. This video is not going to be one of those videos. Instead, this video is going to show you what not to do. And you might be asking yourself, well, what is this guy talking about? what not to do. Well I've gotten a number of questions over the years on many of my Sony Handycam review videos talking about an oft mentioned but seldom used for good reason feature that Handycams came with. That is the infamous USB streaming capability that a number of Digital 8 and even I think at least one this specific model of Hi8 Handycam came with back in the day. So, of course, this camcorder predates any of that stuff. This is from 1999. It's a Hi8 XR model. I've used this thing a lot. I've recorded so many tapes with this thing, and I recently dug this back out of storage. This, like many other camcorders from this time period, really has a very simplistic way of playing back videos. You have either S-Video or Composite Analog Video Output. Likewise, this Sony CCD TRV608 from 2002 offers S-Video output and an AV out jack. However, quite a number of Sony Handycams, be it Mini DV, like this Sony DCR TRV22, actually offered a way to get the footage onto your computer without using the composite analog output or the very well-known gold standard of DV video transfer the four pin what is usually a four pin dv firewire output to a suitably equipped computer with a proper firewire card installed and it was all through the use of a miniature usb jack and of course we're not talking about transferring the videos off of the camcorders memory no you can actually stream the video from the camcorder to your computer over usb so this handy cam also has a USB jack hidden behind this door. This one over here actually has it located behind this flap. Now this Sony article actually goes on to mention two well-known ways to transfer the videos to your FireWire card. You can see I have a cable right here that I leave hanging out up here all the time because I use it all the time for transferring videos from my handy cams. First that requires the use of a FireWire expansion card on your computer not everybody wants to go that route so of course the second method is by using AV video cables and connect it up to either like a VCR or a DVD recorder or even like a USB video capture device like an easy cap but the third little known yet highly dubious method of transferring videos to the computer is using USB streaming however USB streaming is limited to Windows 2000 Media Center and Windows XP only and now for demonstration purposes, and because I don't have anything, any machine running Windows XP, I actually dug out my Panasonic Toughbook. This thing's been through the ringer and carries with it a number of battle scars. Now, I actually had to dig out this miniature USB cable because I don't really have anything that still uses mini USB connections these days. Everything shifted over to micro USB, USB, C and of course lightning connectors for my iPhone and here we are a familiar landscape well almost quite familiar this isn't exactly the uh, standard bliss wallpaper that Windows XP came with on the Luna theme but uh, 
it's good enough with, of course, the optional Zoom theme that Home Depot ran on all their computers back when they had Windows XP. What we're here to focus on is this right here, which is Sony's USB video driver, which you had to download. You used to be able to do so right off their website, but they've since removed the option to, to download it. Uh, I guess because it's out of support for Windows XP has been out of support for so long. But thankfully I still had a copy kicking around on a forgotten hard drive. Now you actually need to go into the menu system to enable USB streaming. Windows has found new hardware. Okay, it's still finding new hardware, but it's not letting me click on it. Gotta love the little Windows XP quirks all these years later. I just let this camcorder sit here and it just went into doing its demo mode that it would have done when this camcorder was for sale in stores, brand new. Kind of funny seeing that all these years later. It's demoing all the cheesy built-in picture effects, like negative art and pastel colors. So I don't currently have any video editing software installed on here, but I can use the built-in Windows Movie Maker program, which should allow me to capture the video right from the USB cable. We can see that it's picked up the Sony digital imaging video, the camcorder, and then the audio device is switchable between the computer's audio or the camcorder, so I'm going to use the camcorder, of course. Okay, and the audio is fixed, you can't change that. So we're going to click Next, and we're going to type USB for the video name. Now this is where we get to the major drawback of using USB capture with our Sony Handycam. You see it's not even allowing us to select the gold standard for DV video, standard definition video, DVAVI 720 by 480 It's only letting me choose best quality for playback on my computer, or I could go to the other settings here. So, like, I could use high quality video large. It's going to try to record 640 by 480 Alright, so we're going to start capture, and I don't know how I clear this menu off the screen. There we go. This is a test using the Sony CCD TRV 608 and demo mode won't turn off. There we go. So you can see one of the main reasons why I would never recommend using USB streaming. Quality is very poor, very, very jittery and laggy and poor quality. There's a look at the camcorder I was using to record this with. All right, so we captured that video. I'm going to stop the capture now and click finish. And it created a Windows Media video file. For some reason, there's no audio whatsoever, even though you clearly saw me change the audio input to the camcorder. Okay, well, that didn't work out, so time to try uh, USB capture using this Sony Digital 8 Handycam. So we're currently recording, and I'm going to press play. And if all goes to plan, you should be able to see the video playing right now. I can already see the frame rate lagging severely. And I'm sure the audio quality is just as bad. Intended to have that song playing. So anybody who actually wants to listen to that song isn't going to go to this video and listen to nine seconds of it. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But it just goes to show you that YouTube's content ID copyright uh, automated copyright identification system is really screwed up i mean how much money do they expect to lose it's not like i'm ripping lossless audio files and just giving people download links or something like that this is in a youtube video that's not even intended to have that song playing so anybody who actually wants to listen to that song isn't going to go to this video and listen to nine seconds of it so i just noticed one thing off the bat this was a 16 by 9 video that was recorded to the tape and it captured it 4x3, 640 by 480 So you can see the quality is really not that good. Definitely not suitable for any kind of video transfer work where you actually want decent quality. been quite some time, many years since I've used virtual dub, so you're going to have to bear with me, but I'm going to go capture AVI, uh, device, 
set that to the camcorder which uh, I don't know what's going on there it's kind of funny because the frame rate actually looks smoother now that we're using virtual dub to capture as opposed to Windows Movie Maker definitely a couple drop frames every now and again as I start to get a little rambunctious with moving the camera but aside from that definitely does look smoother we can see that the specs listed down here show us that we didn't get any drop frames but that's not taking into consideration any frames that the camera itself dropped while it was doing real-time encoding over USB it's just telling us that the computer itself didn't drop any frames while it was capturing and we can see that it looks like it did capture it at 30 FPS pretty sure it's not going to let us use 720 by 480 but we can dream yep. not going to work 640 by 480 Oh, seems like that actually worked. So maybe you can change the resolution and bump it up to 480p. I'm going to go ahead now and set this to VW Test 2. And we're going to press Capture. See, now the video preview is just fine. I'm going to press Play. And you can see this is actually a 16 by 9 widescreen video, but it's incapable of transferring the video in widescreen. So it's just taking the video and shrinking it to fit in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. And the video is currently transferring right now at around 28 frames per second. Not quite 30, but pretty damn close. It actually seems to me like the quality of USB streaming using this Handycam, which is newer, is better than using this one down here, which is from 2002. So this one's from around 2002, and this one is from 2006, going by the date code on the bottom. All right, we're going to stop the capture, and we're going to stop the tape playing here on the camcorder for now. Close out virtual dub and inspect these two files that we have here okay I'm not sure what went upside down on Windows XP but apparently media info can't be opened so we can't see detailed information about the files so I'm just gonna transfer these files over to this flash drive put it on my main computer and inspect the video metadata and audio metadata to see what kind of quality we can get well, one thing I noticed right off the bat, just look how big the video files are since there was no compression used. So this will definitely give us the most accurate depiction of the quality. Here's the first test video's media info. And uh, this really doesn't mean much because this is just telling us what capture settings we used. Of course, if the camera itself is feeding very low bit rate, low resolution video and audio, quality is going to be contingent upon the weakest link, which in this case is the camcorder's USB streaming capabilities because pretty sure that it wasn't transferring audio at studio quality 96 kilohertz sampling rate and then the second test is showing that we have a video bit rate of 141 megabits per second and then the audio again is studio quality 96 kilohertz with a 3000 kilobit per second bit rate so of course the true test is not what the media properties say but what our eyes tell us and now instead of pointing the camera at the screen I'll overlay this video directly atop this one and you can see that the quality is pretty bad uh, you can see lots of compression artifacting very poor quality uh, video and audio really not all that great but definitely not suitable for long-term or even short-term archival purposes but with this upgraded battery it actually sticks out a little bit but again that's okay not a good idea to leave tape compartments open like that so I'm gonna put in Kinegrinds 2001 Master Tape 51 whatever that actually means and close the tape compartment the video just looks like a real crappy uh, YouTube video from like 2009 so if you want the best quality when transferring 
your memories that are on 8mm tapes, be it Video 8, Hi8, or Digital 8 to your computer. Don't take a shortcut and try using USB streaming. Just use FireWire or a capture card to capture the videos to your computer. And again, in my case, I'm using a 4-pin FireWire cable and an appropriate FireWire card. So that's my review and public service announcement of why you shouldn't use USB streaming unless you want your videos recorded with something like this to look like something recorded with this.